All right, so next up, we're going to deep dive into solving chronic diseases at scale with the help of big data. So I'm so excited to introduce an impressive Singaporean entrepreneur, Naval Roy, founder and CEO of Holmask, who will share his story on building Holmask and how they are aiming to transform healthcare. I actually got a chance to meet Naval already back in Slush, Singapore, and I have to say, I was very impressed not only by his company, but also his lovely personality. So let, without further ado, let's give a huge round of applause to you. Naval Roy, welcome. And you have the clicker there. Cool. First of all, I mean, that was an amazing presentation by Hua. Uh, very impressive what he's building. Uh, but more impressive the fact that all of this was not possible or even talked about five years back. Uh, so it's a uniquely historic time in the sense uh, the kind of innovations are happening. And uh, very, very happy and proud to be here. Uh, you know, credit goes to the upgraded team to holding an amazing uh, panel and bringing a set of, uh, you know, sort of uh, entrepreneurs, investors, and everyone on the same platform. So thank you to be here. I mean, pleasure to be here, and uh, thank you for having me. Uh, let me share my perspective on what we are building and how we are thinking about it. And I have taken a unique advantage of being a complete outsider. Uh, what I mean by as an outsider that I'm trained as an economist. I have nothing to do with healthcare. Uh, I've se I spent 15 plus years in finance. Um, but I, and I bumped into healthcare around three years back when I was reading somewhere in Economist that for the first time in human history, more people die from chronic disease than infectious disease. And that statement still bugs me. It bugs me to the core. Uh, it somewhere feels like a failing of us as a human society as we have evolved. As we have become more successful in terms of managing multiple things, somehow we have created our own set of disease and problem, and we per, we think that we are burdened by to a level that we are not solving the overall problem, but we are only solving a certain component of it. Um, Holmask, the way I look at it, is a, an attempt to reduce the burden of that disease, both from individual point of view, but also from the macroeconomic point of view. That's the key goal. And th our message is, in managing chronic disease, the key value creation is all by early detection and early intervention. We started with diabetes, but uh, here are a few numbers to look at. The total global healthcare expenditure is around $6.5 trillion. But if you look at the contribution of non-communicable diseases, you know, from diabetes to cardiovascular to early stages of mental health, and related to another three or four disease area, they capture close to around 60% of the healthcare budget, okay? Which is around $4.5 trillion at a global stage. And if you think harder, at least two thirds of that cost can be contained, reduced, as well as completely managed, okay? Here is the overall understanding of how a disease progresses. And if you broadly categorize them into three buckets, one is the early intervention bucket, then it becomes chronic stage, and then essentially it becomes a late stage, which is highly complex and highly comorbid stage. The reality is the way we handle care protocol right now, almost nothing gets done till a patient becomes chronic. And it's more of a structural problem rather than not the desire to solve it. In the sense, if I'm diagnosed with diabetes today, I'll go to a doctor, the doctor will give me metformin and ask me to come back after six months, okay? Not with the bad intent, but the reality is he has got, he or she has got far more, more chronic patient to take care of. Whereas if you think from the disease point of view, by the time I become chronic, the probability of reversal of that disease is almost zero. And hence, if I really want to contain the impact of the disease, it's left upon me as an individual to really manage it, and that's where all the problem starts. And hence, the, the, the way I, we look at it is, the current healthcare infrastructure only kicks in when a patient is chronic, and it is too late at that stage to meaningfully reverse. 
we need to meaningfully engage at earlier stage and that's where the world of you know digital health comes in and that's where we can be digital health and data analytics can be very very powerful because the key intent out here is to really reduce the rate of disease progression and reduce comorbidity if you are able to achieve the bottom two points essentially one can live with this disease in a significant manner but without really impacting the lifestyle the burden as well as the overall impact on the healthcare system okay this equation in some sense is you know the holy grail of us as a company and how we think about intervention uh, you know the way i look at it is if i am diagnosed with a disease tomorrow my path to cure and cure can be replaced by containment you know whatever word you want to use it that's a bit a strong word but essentially that's dependent on three factors medication adherence and lifestyle okay you can take the adherence into two parts adherence to medication or adherence to lifestyle and let's assume full adherence to medication and let's create a binary world by which if i take a correlation of my path to cure to medication versus my path to cure to adherence and lifestyle and the left side is called p and the right side is q then for the first 15 years of the life of the disease the correlation of the left side is significantly significantly weaker than the right side for the case of diabetes 90 percent of the time that's around 0.3 and on the right side is around 0.7. What it tells you that if I'm diagnosed with the disease tomorrow, I can eat as much medication as I want, but if I really want to reverse the outcome or improve the outcome, then I need to do something on the right side. Whereas the current care protocol is all centered around the left side, from pharmaceutical to hospitals to everything else. What we are trying to do is how do we build a industrial strength right side architecture so that we can meaningfully interact with people and meaningfully engage their life here is a latest publication uh, which came out in uh, the new england journal of medicine the deployment of preventive uh, interventions time for a paradigm shift it's a very impressive paper to look at and it has been proven again and again and again that how it can be done but there are a structural problem to achieve that. And I will strongly recommend to all of you to go through and read that. Okay, here is a pilot case of what we have built. We have built a diabetes disease management program. Okay, and this is one of the cases where this person when he joined at that time, his weight was at 111.6 kgs and his HbA1c was 8.9. In six months time, using our platform, which is essentially a combination of health coaches plus, you know, interaction mechanism, as well as tracking his food and eating habits, and a micro nudging at its best, as well as micro lessons at its best, this person has been able to achieve his weight reduction from 111.6 to 96 kgs, whereas his HbA1c has come down from 8.9 to 5.1. For all practical purpose, this person can live with the disease as long as you want if he maintains this particular weight. The problem is how do we do it at a very macro scale? How do we really scale it? And that is what we are continuously building at. You know, what we are continuously trying to do it is how do I go from diabetes to other therapeutic areas like hypertension, depression, and other areas, as well as how do I really scale it? And that's the problem that you know the future of Hallmark will be catered to that one. On top of that, the way I look at it is there is a, or rather the way we look at it is there is a very high degree of comorbidity between the behavior health as well as, you know, the, the chronic disease. In parallel to in Singapore, we run a huge, uh, you know, sort of diabetes platform, whereas in the US, we also run a huge mental health platform. Uh, and what I find is there is a significant, significant high correlation between the two. Most of the patients who come for our mental health treatment, 70% of them have diabetes. And the people who come on our diabetes platform, majority of them have early signs of depression or some other mental disease areas, okay? I'm still completely baffled as to what's the causality behind it, or we don't know the full causality behind it, but the correlation is well established. And 
I am, we are really looking deeper into it as to what's the way we can really figure out a way of solving this in a meaningful manner. Okay? <laughs> the, this is interesting. Um, I put this up because uh, I find that what we are trying to do um, is essentially a very, very hard task. I find healthcare an extremely complex problem to solve, and it almost feels like uh, climbing uh, Mount Everest. Uh, lo and behold, uh, one of uh, the gentleman, Paul Valin, uh, he was going on this expedition, and uh, we are supporting his expedition, and he took our pictures, you know, took our logo and took it up there. So it is essentially May 21st, uh, on the top of the Mount Everest that he took the picture. But uh, what I want to give you is a sense of the spirit that we look at it that solving the problem that we are doing is really, really a very hard task, okay? In the case of diabetes and most of the non-communicable disease areas, I think most of the clinical problems have been solved. What is not solved is how to reach out to a very large scale and really engage with the patient in the earliest stage and literally solve that problem. With that, I will close it and welcome any questions. Thank you so much, Nawal. That was pretty amazing. Uh, any questions from the audience? Yes, we can see one from Matthew. If you can bring the mic to Matthew at the back row. Please. <laughs> So could you, could you compare and contrast your program? I'll give you three people to compare to. So one is run by Finn, Zerta, which is trying to reverse diabetes using a very intensive diet with clinicians. And, and what, sorry, the, what, sorry, the, what are the name go. did you mention? Zerta, V-I-R-T. Yeah, yeah. uh, the second is Livongo, which is more like a management process and program, now going to yes. other diseases. And then there are a few others, which uh, a number of others, which combine um, diabetes and others with sort of mental reset. So one like Canary Health, you may know, which does kind of- Canary Health, AA. yeah. So you mentioned mental health, mental diabetes. Yeah. What is the type of program and where, where do you put yourself yeah. in that kind of mix? Absolutely. So I would consider uh, there is a, uh, and I can add a few other names to that, uh, you know? So you have Omada Health, you have Verta, you have Livongo, you have Onduo, you have Welldoc, uh, all of these are essentially is a combination of part diet, part, uh, you know, glucometer driven approach, as well as health coaches approach. Some of them uh, have a health coach approach, which is customized and centered with the patients. Some of them, majority of them is run by the machine. Okay. Um, and each one of them have unique uh, strength to it. And the way I look at it is you essentially differentiate, it's less around differentiation of uh, what is uniquely different of one versus the other. And Verta in this case is uniquely different because they are very focused on the diet. And the cases that they are taking are extreme chronic cases, whereas we are more around the pre-diabetic and the early diabetic area, okay? Livongo is glucometer driven. So essentially, if you look at the population of diabetes, many of them are not dependent on insulin till the HbA1c hits a certain level. And hence the glucometer or the Livongo business are again catered to that portion. And if you look at their business model is essentially to influence the cost of burden for the insurance company for the CMS, okay? Whereas we are more closer towards Omada. Okay, so Omada Health has started with pre-diabetic and we are also about pre-diabetic and the early diabetic, okay? The chronic are, I think, is the target audience for hospitals and that's the, you know, that's the right place to be. But the way I look at the sector is that the mass of population that needs care is significantly larger than one versus the other, you know, the amount of the company that we are trying to do. And each one of these companies don't cater to more than 2% of the diabetic population in the old country, okay? In the US itself, you have Omada, Onduo, Verta, Livongo, and if you look at them, all of them are not operating than more than 2% of the population set. So it's a significant large population to go after. That's number one. Number two, it's almost like uh, which one is better, BMW or Ferrari or <laughs> you know, Mercedes. All of them serves the same purpose of taking from point A to point B, that, but the nuances of the engine is where it becomes powerful. Where we become powerful is 
the interface on the front end is a health coach, but the back end is heavily data driven, data analytics approach. And this is just one application for diabetes. Our end goal would be literally have one for diabetes, have for hypertension, have for depression, and look around the back end, the comorbidity across that, and literally run it in a very enhanced data driven approach. I'm not sure if that answers your questions, but yeah. Wonderful. Any further questions for Naval? I have one. Oh, well, there's one. Please. So, yeah. Yeah. Early and so on, but you need to really identify the group and, and to target the interventions and all that. How, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, so I would say uh, if you broadly look at the earlier stage population, there is a good population of them is pre diabetic, you know, and it's very tough to really indicate as to who are the people. And most of them, even though you can use BMI as an indicator, you can find that out. But most of the people who are early diabetic, they know that they have it, they even have tried once or twice. So I don't think the detection is a bigger issue there. The bigger issue is really intervention. How do we really intervene? Having said that, if detection is the key goal, there are multiple companies who are trying to approach that problem. And I would suggest the Jana Care out of India is doing it quite well. You know? Whereas our approach is the intervention matters far more in this particular case. Whereas if you go into the depression area, then the detection also matters a lot because you know that can be a very very different case altogether so in different therapeutic area detection versus intervention play can be played and our thinking is the intervention matters far more than detection in many areas does that yeah thank you for the presentation um, so with prevention there is a bit of a money problem so who should be paying for prevention? Because you have the individual who benefits, you have the employer in many cases who benefits, you have um, insurance companies, and you have a public health system that benefits. What are your experiences of, of getting people to pay for this and who pays for it in what cases? Yes, uh, I find healthcare is one of the only sectors in which consumer is not the payer. And that corrupts the whole behavior. Okay, <laughs> um, the, the reality is uh, for all of these programs, uh, it's less challenge of the product innovation, it's all the challenges in the business model innovation. And as of now, no one likes to pay for it. That's the reality. Having said that, I would propose very much that the trend is moving at a very fast pace. Uh, who all are paying? In the US, if you are a self-insured employer and if you are under ACO, then it's in your best interest to really pay for you. The trend that I'm finding that the insurance companies are going to be the biggest uh, payer of this. And they are not going to pay it because they believe in the goodwill of this, but they are going to pay it because over a period of time, it helps them to get the engagement of the patients and they can really price their, you know. So the way, if you look at the science is this, if you take the full diabetic population, the subpopulation of them who really manages their disease is uniquely different than the people who don't manage it. And people who manage their disease, their risk and pricing should be uniquely different than people who don't. Now, under the universal healthcare umbrellas and all of that, people have the incentive not to take care of the health. But the more and more trend happening that in, at an individual level, they do have an incentive to watch their health but at a macro level, the insurance company has an incentive to really look at what is the way we can do the risk stratification, and hence there is an intent to you know, pay for it. And if you look at the cost-benefit analysis of the cost that it takes to deploy a program like this versus the expected gain, the expected gain is at least in the 10 to 20 you know, uh, times range, and hence it makes meaningful sense. But all said and done, I think most of the business model innovation is not there will happen in the next five to seven years time. Wow, let's get one more round of applause to Nawal Roy. Thank you so much, that was Thank fascinating. You. Thank you. Thank you.